still playing with Kyog and Rayquaza. Um, yes, some of the support Pokemon have changed. The supporting cast is definitely different. I've not seen a Hitmontop. I've not seen a Raichu. Yeah. Uh, but in the same vein, it's still the same concepts, right? And you're now going up against a world champion who understands the concepts, who knows the mechanics and the, the minutia behind Primal Reversion and, and how to use those to the best of their ability. So very, very interesting to see exactly how those skills transfer, but how a player who has been around team building and practicing yeah. and, and talking to top players for so long in Feist matches up. There you go, a really friendly handshake. And I wonder if uh, Wolf brought uh, Kyo. No, there you go. We got the teams ready for you guys. It's Ivaltal, Incineroar, Togedemaru, Gengar, Kyogre, and Bronzong from Wolf's side. And Feist is bringing Incineroar, Groudon, Xerneas, Gengar, Tapufini, and Landorus T once again on the stream. And yeah. interestingly enough, Wolf's team is like pretty similar to his world's winning team, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you've got an Intimidator instead of Hitmontop, you've got Incineroar. Uh, you've got a small electric Pokemon <laughs> uh, in the form of Togedemaru instead of the uh, original Raichu. But, you know, the rest of it, you've changed out the flying element of it from the uh, Rayquaza to the Evil Tal. Yeah. Could be an interesting selection here. Um, you know, I like the Wolves kept some of it, not completely thrown out the concepts there. Uh, but I think this is, in general, a very, very different team. I think this is certainly uh, not the type of team that we have seen from him before. I really do like uh, Evaltal paired with Kyogre and Togedemaru and especially Bronzong. Bronzong plus Kyogre is really strong against uh, Groudon Xerneas if you manage to get up the Trick Room because then you get the the, the plays rolling. You can skill swap uh, your Levitate ability onto uh, the Kyogre and get uh, the Rain back to, to let Kyogre hit the Groudons. And uh, I, li I do like this core. And when you've got uh, Bronzong and Togedemaru, Evaltal makes total sense because you cover the Xerneas already and then Evaltal is uh, kind of a, a really strong Pokemon against Lunala, the Psychic types, against almost every Trick Room set out, out there. And it's really interesting how those players are going to lead up if Wolf is going to uh, try to set up a trick room and sweep with Kyogre later on. He might deal some damage with Iwalta on the first rounds and, and clear up with Kyogre. This might be a plan. Uh, there you go. We see the leads, guys. Uh, Wolf is sending out Incineroar and Ivaltal, and Feist is sending out Tapu Fini and Incineroar, going really defensive there. Yeah, I think both these players are honestly going to be leaning in to a much more defensive style of play, uh, something that Wolf was renowned for back in that 2016 run, being able to switch, being able to play the, yeah. the most optimal and safest play at any given time. Certainly, you know, something you want to see um, from a player like that is is sticking to that methodology. Uh, but Feist is also well known for being able to understand those strategies and pick them apart or even, you know, just get even more out of them. Uh, bringing in Xerneas right now against the Evil Tile, uh, definitely not a bad thing. Not at all. That Tapu Fini wasn't in a bad spot, but he was quite sure that the Tapu Fini doesn't get, uh, uh, like, attacked. So Xerneas is a really safe switch in that spot. Uh, Wolf tries to better up the spot position by uh, going uh, for U-turn. Incineroar coming back to Wolf, and now he might bring something in that threatens Xerneas and or Incineroar. Yeah, and I think this is something that you know Wolf was known for, being able to switch out, being able to intimidate and switch out, and being able to keep fake outs available to him. Always a signature part of his play, and to, to see him playing up to it in this format is very exciting. Because uh, it's a skill set that a lot of people, I think, have let go a little bit. Not forgotten about, um, but not been as concerned about. We just see the Bronzong make its way onto the field. And that's going to be a direct answer to Xerneas. The big question yeah. here, though, what ability is that Bronzong carrying? <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure he's, he's uh, a running levitate. Because heat proof when you got a got a uh, Kyogre in your team is not that helpful and helps in some situations, but you usually go for the Levitate ability. And that Bronzong switching was really good. He 
threatens Feist with a potential trick room, with a potential gyro ball. Feist is incinerator is already intimidated, but we, if it is the same one as uh, Tilbrot, it might be uh, a scene with incinerator, which still threatens the bronze on, especially with the wall tower on the field. And that's why Wolf is switching out that wall tower for a Kyogre. Yeah, I think he absolutely has to here. He has to get that uh, Evil Tile out of the way uh, because he cannot afford that Evil Tile to just get felled by a quick attack from this Xerneas. Uh, but Xerneas has to be careful as well, has to try and keep itself safe from this Bronzong. And that Bronzong in turn being protected by this Kyogre's Primordial Sea, uh, a more intense form of Drizzle, uh, means that any Flare Blitzes, anything of that nature, heading towards this Bronzong to try and double in and knock it out. Oh, Probably oh, not going to oh. be the play. Uh, we are going to see, though, a non-fire type attack. This recent addition to the kind of... Uh, it's always been available to Incineroar, but yeah. it's recently really made it popular again. Uh, the malicious Moonsoul uh, might just be the solution here to Bronzar. A oh, very clever play by Fize. Uh Going for Moonblast, you either chip uh, Bronzong enough uh, to finish it off with the strong Z-move, or you're gonna cover a potential switch in really well because nothing can stand the Moonblast plus Malicious Moonsault really well, and so Feist is already in the lead. Yeah, Feist is taking a Pokemon count advantage here. Um, and this game for Wolf, I'm very interested uh, really how he's gonna deal uh, with the Xerneas now. We've already seen that Bronzong has gone, Yep. There's no chance to paralyze it with something like the Togodomaru, um, you know, and the Togodomaru using a move like, you know, Nuzzle, for example, which would have been great. Yeah. There's just not that option for Wolf right now, and, and Fi seems to be in a solid position where oh, definitely. He's, he's able to kind of control the board and, and push pressure down. Um, you know, Kyogre, of course, is going to be moving after, so it's going to be relying on Origin Pulse. Yep. And I think once you get Incinera out, this board looks fantastic for Fives. Uh, and Wolf switches in Incinera uh, in favor of Kyogre to not let it take any damage. And uh, of course intimidating the uh, Fives' Incinera once again and uh, being able to uh, fake out the next turn. But Fives doesn't play that uh, game and switches out his Incinera in favor of Groudon, which was really safe because the only thing uh, Wolf could have done was like going for an Ice Beam because there's always the pressure of Groudon coming in and uh, Xerneas is still standing there and uh, able to either deal some damage to Yvalto or just straight up go for Geomancy. Yeah, I got a feeling this uh, is going to be a big turn uh, for Feist to see if he can get things prepped yeah. uh, for the next couple of turns. We do get the Snarl in uh, beforehand, so that Xerneas isn't going to be doing as much damage, but the likelihood is, here it is, he's just going to be boosting up. Uh, so that Snarl, not really sticking, uh, that Snarl will be nullified and the boost will go the other direction as well uh, for a potential uh, Xerneas sweep at the end of this game. This this might be, uh, well, it was really well played by Feist to take out their Bronze Song first, doubling up with the Moonblast and the Malicious Moon. So also the, the only real answer to Xerneas is gone. And, uh, Wolf uh, still got the fake out pressure. He can either fake out Xerneas and Snarl once more. Uh, if Xerneas protects, he could maybe fake out and, and do a huge amount of damage into the ground on Salar. This is probably what Feist is covering right now, switching in that Incineroar, getting his own fake out pressure and not taking a strong dark type move attack from that Evolta, I guess. Yeah, well, we're going to see how it goes for him. Um, you know, there is going to be a few options here. Xerneas protecting, uh, so maybe trying to fish for a little piece of information here. The fake out is going that way, so it didn't want to get any follow-up damage on it. I can respect that. Oh. Uh, but it does allow Evil Tile to set up a Tailwind uh, for free, and that's going to be huge. Uh, we did see before, of course, uh, the Evil Tile move before Xerneas, yeah. when it was trying to Geomancy. And with that in mind, with the Tailwind, their speed is essentially matched now. Yeah, and e Evil Tile is again faster than Xerneas. Uh, Wolf's situation is uh, got kind of better. He's he's still playing for his outspot. Fight still got everything under control with uh, the crowd on in the back. He has to play it carefully to not get it uh, let down. Because I guess the only one that can 
really, really uh, do some damage to, to Xerni as is a full power water spout. And uh, this is what, what Wolf wants to achieve. But Evolta goes down to a critical hit. And this is probably it. Do you see any outs for, for Wolf yet? No, I mean, uh, he has to bring in Kyogre next. And then right after that, Vice just brings in Groud on at any point. Yeah. Takes, he has complete control of the weather because he has that Pokemon advantage. And once that weather control goes over to Feist, I think that's game. Yeah. Yes. You know, the, the options then become very limited for this Kyogre to hit the Groudon. And I really like that Feist has been smart enough to save that Groudon. It's literally come in, yeah. primal reverted, and left, um, which I think is important for a, a Pokemon like this. I can see Wolf potentially just moving on to the next game. Uh, there really isn't much information to be gathered here. No, not at all. He probably already knows the team, I guess, uh, because people, players especially, tend to talk about what they faced, uh, what, what was good, how to play against it, and, and this is where uh, you see what a good player does. Wolf only has one option to send in, but he's already thinking about a game plan, how to win the next games, and this is what we've talked about the last uh, minutes, like figuring out how to win, how to change matches, how to change the, the, the match up, what do I bring, what do I leave at home, uh, this is what he is trying to do now. So is Feist probably. Uh, on the other hand, you have to think, what does your opponent plan in the next game? So, should I adapt? Uh, is my, my all my four Pokemon okay that I brought? It worked out this time really well. What do you think, Adam? Is is Wolf going to stick with the same four again? The problem, I, uh, not a problem, but the, the bit that's a little bit concerning is Bronzon came in and was a very clear and telegraphed answer to the Xerneas. That was the the obvious one. Uh, Evil Tile cannot beat Xerneas on its own. It needs some assistance and. He brought that in and it didn't quite play out, right? It yeah. didn't get there in the, the way that it was expected to. It got caught by a malicious Moonsault. Yes, it also got a Moonblast, so I don't think it would have taken the malicious Moonsault. Anyway, uh, I think the mix up here has got to be look at that Togedemaru. Look at that Nuzzle. You've already got some speed control here. Uh, you know, the teams are matched up on that speed control. But just really press that advantage. Get yeah. the. Xerneas nuzzled, get it paralyzed, get it unable to play the game properly, and then just just push on and try and win from there. Honestly, yeah, it's it's like uh, if if you look at the team, uh, the four Pokemon Wolf brought to this, uh, there is no real answer to Tapu Fini, so he has to make sure to be able to take out the Tapu Fini, let it be with full power water spouts plus some chip damage, or let it be a thunder from Kyogre, but usually Tapu Finis are trained to to stem more than one thunder, especially with a berry activating after the first hit. So you usually stand two. This is what you what you aim for. And uh, just to get back to this game, Feist is kind of closing it by sending in the Primal Groudon, setting up the weather fine, being able to just go for some ground type attacks. And Cern is is still boosted. Uh, Still able to deal a huge amount of damage to both Incineroar and Kyogre, and Groudon then is probably able to pick up the KOs. But this is what. Yeah. I think. Really well played by Fights, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, taking that knockout on the Bronzong as yeah. soon as it appeared uh, has turned out to be very important. The Pokemon advantage uh, in these primal matchups is key because yeah. you want to have an extra, essentially, an extra switching option so that you can switch in your primal whenever you need it, yeah. but it's also not the only thing your team can do, right? Like, you want to be able to just play the game as liberally as possible, and with all these Pokemon being so, so valuable to their respective trainers, you cannot just let them drop for no reason. Yeah, and it's really hard, like, Wolf wants to bring Bronzong, but he has to make sure that on the Malicious Moons, uh, moons off, he switches in his own Incineroar and fights next uh, next match is probably trying to catch that lab, be a, a bit more preservative, preservative. He can still play around with his Mega Gengar to trap Incineroar maybe in and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's gonna be really interesting, but Vice, I guess, he's going to stick with the same four. Tapofini is a, is a really good uh, pick in this match matchup, so is... Uh, and Cinerox, yes, and Crowd on, and uh, I guess Wolf is the one who has to adapt his game plan a little bit. 
and I'm not saying I know better than Wolf. I'm, I'm definitely oh, not. No. <laughs> That's, we uh, don't say that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I do think Togunamai would be an interesting choice. Um, we are going to see Groudon connect its press play. Oh. That's going to be the game. There um, you go. I think Wolf just taking a little bit of time to assess uh, how we how we can get out of it, how the adaptations can be made. Um, because Feist really, you know, ever since that malicious Moonsault landed, just looked in control of this game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Targeting Maru might be an option. I don't know what its attacking moves are, if it's a focus session grind, which goes a bit more on the offensive route, or if it's a uh, Salt Blast, or played with a Berry. Uh, depending on what that Targeting Maru might do, but it usually doesn't help against how to beat the Tapu Fini, and this is this is probably key for So. So Togunamaru has some options, actually, um, that could help it with not just the opposing team, but the Tapu Fini. Um, one of the options I kind of like is um, Super Fang. Yeah. Because it helps you just yeah. take out that huge chunk of health. Um, you've also got Nuzzle, which is notoriously good about it as well. Um, but it then has this like very weird plethora of supporting moves. Oh, yeah. Um, or help Spiky hand. Shield. Yeah. It's very odd. It's a super strange Pokemon um, in... Trying to find a space for it on your team is definitely never easy. Um, but I mean, once you've got Nuzzle and Encore, I think you know, you're pretty close to yeah. to what you want it to be. Maybe uh, Wolf is even bringing Gengar. Gengar lock, could help. Like yeah. to lock to, to, to lock up like Incineroar, Tapufini, and stuff like that. If you can lock Tapufini in and get off some damage with Sludge Bomb and maybe a full power Water Spout does the rest, then uh, this could be a route for Wolf to go. But I guess he got the best plan in the pocket already. I'm sure he's figured it out. I'm sure in those long turns he was taking towards the end of game uh, game number one. He's come up with some ideas. There's no way he's just letting it go. And there, as you mentioned, Sebi, is the Gengar. Um, that's going to help out against that Xerneas a whole lot. Uh, we do, of course, have the mirrors of the Incineroars here. But the curious thing is, Wolf's Incineroar can fake out Feist's Incineroar partner, but Feist's Incineroar cannot fake out Wolf's Incineroar yeah. partner. And, and that, that changes the tone a little bit. And that Gengar is threatening with Xerneas, but Wolf also, it's a really clever leap by Feist because Wolf knows there is Malicious Moonslot on that uh, Incineroar's and coming. So it's a really, uh, really mind-gaming uh, lead from Feist where he can he can uh, kind of play relatively safely if he wants to kind of trade and uh, just clear up with, with Groudon later on. Uh, if that's the plan, but we do see a really fast fake out from Feist into Incineroar. Oh. And Gengar from Wolf uses Taunt on Xerneas. Yeah, but Xerneas doesn't fall for it. Xerneas actually just Moonblasts right back at the Gengar. Yeah. Uh, maybe expecting a switch out there. Um, but good amount of damage. Uh, every little bit is going to help against removing any damage from this Gengar. Uh, but Xerneas not falling for the the bait there and yep. trying to geomancy a really smart play from Fires. definitely so he put that Gengar into range where he doesn't even need his uh, C move to uh, beat the Gengar he can straight up just go uh, uh, Darkest Lariat right, right back yeah and uh, this was a really clever play while he didn't expect that Xerneas is still at full health obviously wants to switch out since he cannot set up that Gengar could deal some damage to Xerneas but then he goes down so Feist again is, although his Xerneas is taunted he positioned so well with Xerneas and its general. The one thing I like about Feist's selection here is he also left open the opportunity for Xerneas to protect yeah. uh, the following turn the Gengar on Wolf's side actually protecting right now uh, will not get caught by the Moonblast um, but I mean there's going to be some interesting options uh, with this malicious moonsault right now, uh, you know, protect doesn't quite stop the Z moves. Not yet, not 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 all, but oh, I doubt this is going to be enough. I don't think it's going to be it's enough. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. I don't think it's enough, but I think it then puts him in range for maybe using something like a dazzling gleam instead of the moonblast to yeah. edit. Um, and that's definitely going to be a slightly safer move. Um, there it is, a little bit of damage, uh, only a quarter, um, while it couldn't fully protect itself. Um, and that's, that's a nice play, I like that. I think that's very, very smart. You either get the knockout, or you help out with your ranges a little bit when it comes down to, you know, some of the attacks in the subsequent few turns. Uh, Wolf starts what Wolf's like, Wolf likes to do, like, 
getting himself in a really good position with a snow U-turn from Incineroar. He got the moves correct. Uh, Feist was aiming at him. He got he got the C move. <sighs> he got the moon blast, and now Incineroar is waiting to switch out for another partner. But which partner could work out here? Uh, Adam, we could we could see a Bronzon coming in. I think this is I think this is the point where you have to uh, show any further adaptation. I think if you show Kyogre, it's probably going to be a similar team. Um, you know, you've already mixed it up with the Gengar, so I think he's probably taken Bronzong out from game one, put Gengar in, but he's playing very similarly apart from that. Um, that's my bet on how this one's going to work out. So, so to recap, Lexernius is still taunted and cannot protect. So if the Kyogre is faster than Xerneas, well, I doubt that because we got Trick Room probably on the on the team. But uh, Wolf is now in the position where he deals a huge amount of damage, and Rich and Pulse probably is enough to one shot that Incineroar and KO the Xerneas, combined with a Sludge Bomb from Gengar probably. Yeah, well, we are going to see Incineroar oh. on Wolf's side protect. <laughs> That's the one that doesn't want to get hit. Uh, the big thing here, though, Gengar's Sludge Bomb. I uh, do have to remember, there's no uh, special defense boost uh, on this Xerneas. It doesn't need it, though. It does get poisoned. That could be a problem later down the line. Um, as Xerneas is going to trade, I think, itself uh, for this Gengar. One yeah. for one, uh, with the damage from Malicious Moonsault through protect. It does mean in three turns that Gengar has been picked up. Um, but Kyoko's water spout means we're going to say bye to Xerneas on Feist's side. Um, he could be okay with that, to be honest with yeah. you. You know, now he's traded that Gengar. Um, we get back to the situation where if he can bring in something to partner up with Incineroar and quickly knock out one of Wolf's Pokemon on the way in, then he's going to put Wolf in the two-on situation where he's only got two versus potentially three. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be the kind of play he needs to make. He's almost forcing that issue early here by bringing his Groudon in against a Kyogre. Well, he brought the Groudon in, uh, and uh, I like the pick from Wolf. Like, he brought in Cinderoy in, which free freely lets him switch out the, the Kyogre. He can fake out the Groudon, switch in something else. Uh, Feist might actually make use of that. If he got U-turn and he predicts something like that happening, a safe play, and he U-turns out and batters up his poor position. Yeah, this is something we talked about. This is really interesting now. Yeah. Now the big plays are the, going The big plays, start. I think, are going to be revo revolving around U-turn. Yeah. And do you fake out? Do you manually switch? Or do you U-turn to, to get that board position? Because both players are trying to get it. Wolf here, starting off with a manual switch out, could be making that play, which does result in that very quick adaptation uh, all the way through. Grab oh. fire punches, and that is That's absolutely huge. huge. <laughs> oh, the darkest lariat to follow. I think Feist might have called this. Oh, this... I've, I didn't see that one coming, man. but this is the thing we are talking about. That fire punch into Kyoga. And Darkest Lariat into the same slot, taking out the Bronze Song in one hit. Amazing. Yeah, no, uh, uh, to, to be quite fair, that's a... Uh, I mean, we say, oh, it'd be a big play based around switches. And unfortunately, I think Wolf's on the, you know, the not-so-nice end of it. He switches out his Kyogre, thinks I'll save it, Bronze Song will come in. Uh, maybe I'll find my way through this Groudon. But now Feist has three Pokemon remaining. Yeah. And Wolf will have no way, after this Incineroar comes back in, to intimidate again or reset the weather. Or to switch. And or to this is switch, what, yeah. what Feist can still do. He can still preserve his crowd on, take it out, and then let crowd on do the rest. Yeah, right now I think Feist's job is to just switch out crowd on, do whatever you need to do with Incineroar. Yeah. Uh, but calling that Bronze on switch in, <laughs> that was a monster. That was a monster play. And that was, that was the kind of play that, you know, not many people would go for. Not many people oh. think, yes, he must bring it out and not only that you know to call what it was correctly as well uh, very smart there's that ground on leaving the field to, to to do such a great play against a former world champ is like right so s s the audacity oh, of it i can pure believe. cheek yeah so feist this play sealed the deal that the, the matchup was already hard for wolf and uh, he already struggled against how to get him, how to get water spouts off and it's how not to get getting any better, I can tell you. That's yeah. it. I mean, he's got water spouts. He's in the rain. Um, I think now it's Tapu Fini. Oh, hello. 
Tabby Feeny's in here to uh, basically try and whittle down Pokemon yeah. on Wolf's side while the rain is still in play. Uh, and then, as soon as we get the sun back through Desolate Lands, then you can try and tidy up the game yeah. uh, and push on from there. So, be really interesting. This Incineroar does not feel like it's going to be having a good time over on Wolf's side when you were just throat chop chopping for An option I could see is, damage. like, if if uh, Wolf's Incineroar got a C-move as well, and Kyogre going for Ice Beam plus a C-move from uh, uh, Incineroar into the switching in Groudon could be combined with some critical hit or something, yeah. enough to get rid of the Groudon. I'm not sure how I feel about this play. I'm not sure how I feel about bringing in the Groudon like that manually, when you really weren't obliged to. Um, I feel like that may have been a little bit too much. You probably want to bring that in at a later time. We do see the Ice Beam. We don't see the Z move, we just see Throat Chop. Uh, yeah. It's not bad, it brings it down to, to just under half. Yeah. Uh, but right now, I mean, the biggest concern for me is has Feist just shown that off too early? Um, because, you know, he needs his Groudon to be moving first. His Groudon's got to move first to try and yeah. deal with these Pokemon before they fight back. We've seen that Incineroar and Kyogre together can do the right amount of damage. Um, so some speed control here with the Protect. Oh, there you go. Oh, there it is. I love that move. Feist is going for Gravity, and Gravity allows Groudon to hit every Pokemon and not miss with yep. Precipice Blades. And this is really clever. Feist is not letting it down to the odds. He's setting up, how do I win this safely? And uh, I, love, I love that gravity. Got, it got away with it too. Yeah. Both attacks in that turn, heading towards the Groudon on Feist's side of the field. Uh, the Tapafini kind of revealing its movesets a little lacking. Uh, just yeah. making sure it lands the Nature's Madness over and over. As Groudon's Precipice Blades will connect, no doubt about that, due to the gravity. Um, and it also picks up Incineroar while it's there. So the board completely cleared a critical hit uh, just to rub some salt in the wounds there, I guess. As uh, Vice Ashvak advancing to 6-0 and here in Berlin. Congratulations, this was such an intense match. And I bet he was nervous. He was like facing a former world champ and then he pulls off plays, like play after play and just dominating this game. Perfectly, perfectly. I really enjoy that one, Adam. Yeah, no, that was uh, that last turn in game two, or not last turn, the penultimate turns. Just really exciting, to be honest with you, to see them come out and play like that. Um, that's the kind of top play we were alluding yeah. to at the yeah. top of the <laughs> top of the round. We said, you know, what we need is a player who can make the big plays, who can impress us and make a decision, commit to it and say, yeah. this will win me the game. And when they do it and it comes off, you go, well, no, it did win you the game. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what I'm excited yeah. for. I'm hoping we've got more of them to come today. Please. Yes, please. I, I really do start liking that team. It's like really good, and and after we've seen like the Tapufini doing some work, it, it's it's even more offensive than it than it first looks because of that nature madness. The nature's the madness is cool. I'm sorry, I, like I've always loved those moves. The nature's madness, the super fang, that yeah. just put the half in. Yeah. Um, you know, because yes, you still have to do the damage, but it's one of those best tank busters essentially. Yeah. When you're playing against a Pokemon with huge amounts of health. When you're playing as a Pokemon, which is really hard to wear down through its defenses, that's when.